Hi, uh, my name's Kurt. Uh, I'm a principal security researcher with Kaspersky's global research analysis team. I'm, I've been with the team since uh, 2010. Um, and I'm here to talk about uh, APT28. We call them SOFACY. Um, my angle on, or my talk will be about more recent activity. I want to focus on what they've been doing in 2018. There have been some def definitive changes. Uh, Mike just talked quite a bit about their credential harvesting. I, I, I don't really talk about that in this presentation. I talk more about what has been going on with their uh, more traditional malware set, in particular SPLM, and how it's being replaced uh, into 2018, and what sort of interesting uh, targeting changes they've been having. Um, so uh, yeah, that's lovely Masha. Um, so uh, uh, I, I want to describe it in terms of uh, really APT culture, um, what's going on with APT28. Um, in particular, uh, this group is um, arguably not always reckless, not always destructive. They can be measured, they can be agile. And now, uh, into 2018, we expect more changes from the group. Um, they are becoming more and more agile and innovative as time goes on. Um, they're targeting, and there's some interesting crossover going on this year. Um, the X agent code is disappearing. That C++ code base is being replaced. And then, uh, again, I'll go over some crypto and some code comparisons. So um, uh, in addition to the code, we also see the infrastructure itself changing. So whereas the, uh, the operators deploying XPL or SPLM or the X-Agent code has traditionally used infrastructure that's domain-centric, uh, they use Bitcoin to set up at registrars that, where they can maintain their anonymity, um, and that's slowly changing, and we're seeing more Zebracy code, Zebracy, what we call Zebracy infrastructure, which is really a subset of uh, the Sophacy group. Um, they're using IP addresses. They're not using domains. They don't have to hide behind anonymity uh, or privacy uh, services, and they don't have to pay in Bitcoin for those. Um, we also see quite a bit of change in code, and I will go over that as well. So in my mind, uh, since I'm a little bit SPLM focused or X agent focused, I look at uh, different milestones in uh, the code I see delivered from this group um, from 2004 to 2009. It's interesting that they maintain essentially the same code base. They keep delivering the same stuff for years. Um, we see that in uh, 2009 to 2015. And then finally, we start seeing changes uh, much more quickly to what they're delivering and what they're replacing uh, in their code base uh, over time. And in 2018, um, uh, SPLM has pretty much fallen off the map, except for one victim in particular. So at the beginning of 2017, uh, we saw the, the common stuff that we always see from Sophacy. They're tar targeting NATO, they're tar targeting maybe tangential partners related to the, to the Ukraine, um, but it's all very Western uh, focused. And that's what you hear a lot about in the media, their, their DNC hack, their uh, Ukrainian uh, focus, um, their focus on NATO and elections in the EU. But um, we see a different story. Um, we see quite a bit of activity in Central Asia, and in 2018 now, we see um, movement uh, completely further east. So not just the stands, but we see them throughout uh, Mongolia, Japan, and China in particular. And uh, while that is interesting and trending in targeting profiles and regions is interesting, um, and I will say it doesn't discount the fact that they will continue to target organizations in the U.S. and Europe. It's just from what we're seeing, they're pretty intensely focused, uh, their, or their focus is moving further east in Asia. Um, so uh, before I move on uh, from the Far East and their targeting in the Far East, um, really I'd like to talk about Gray Lambert. And um, in, well, Kostin mentioned that for several years, we had been uh, working to identify more Lambert um, components. This is a very high-level, sophisticated actor. It's up there with Equation, Dooku, in terms of sophistication and uh, technical capabilities, coordination, and who they're hitting. Um, 
And Greed Lambert was one of their uh, passive sniffers. So they'll get on a server, um, they have, uh, often they'll replace White Lambert, uh, a, a, a kernel mode uh, passive sniffer with uh, Gray Lambert, a uh, user mode passive sniffer. And um, it's a no bus implant, meaning it's nobody but us can get on the server. Uh, so you have to send magic numbers or magic values um, in your network stream to sort of enable the capabilities of this implant. Um, and uh, it, it, I mean, this is a really complex graphic, but basically uh, it fits in uh, the Lambert families uh, pretty comfortably. It shares some victims and some coding, and uh, it's our 2016-2017 uh, implant. Um, it's, it's, so I, I was just mentioning it's a passive sniffer. It's functionally uh, comparable to a very advanced uh, C door uh, uh, back door. And it was deployed very selectively in China and Iran. And uh, here's just a few of the commands um, that we were able to identify within the components that we saw. Um, but again, it's very selective. It's not a huge backdoor. It's not very large. And the interesting thing is we had found it on a particular server in China, which takes me back to Sophacy. Um, so in this sort of pivot to Asia in 2018, now we see Sophacy targeting, um, targeting uh, Chinese organizations, and in particular, the exact same server that, they, that uh, Gray Lambert had hit uh, previously. So um, this is an aerospace and defense conglomerate. It's huge. Um, the... Uh, the Sophacy components that were deployed to the system after uh, we had cleaned up Gray Lambert are interesting, not um, because they're fairly different from what we've previously seen. So throughout 2017, we had seen uh, SPLM code, or this chopstick backdoor, uh, as a large 300 kilobyte um, backdoor. It was full fe fully featured. It came usually with a keylogger, uh, remote shell and file stealing capabilities, all the what they call kernel communications channels, and it was a fully featured backdoor. Well, along comes 2018, and everything's changed. Uh, those backdoors are not showing up anywhere, um, except on the server. There are the modules, not the backdoor, but there are the smaller modules that show up, and they're showing up as a remote shell in memory. Um, and again, this is shortly after we had cleaned up Gray Lambert and uh, kicked them off of the system. So uh, that left us with some questions. And really all we can do is speculate about how they're getting on these servers. And again, this is interesting because server-side exploitation is not uh, necessarily what they're doing in high volume. Usually they're known for spear phishing. Uh, Mike, Mike showed all the, all the credential harvesting they do on the side as they're spear phishing targets. But you don't see large numbers of servers being exploited by these guys. So that leaves us with this speculation, at least some considerations. One, uh, this is a false flag planted there uh, by the Lamberts in order to create some confusion. Two. Uh, the Lamberts are actually using the remote shell capabilities of Sophacy code that they've stolen. That's kind of unlikely, but possible. Um, three, uh, the, the Sophacy guys had witnessed other um, and recorded network sessions with Lambert implants elsewhere in the world. And then they're simply replaying those sessions with the magic numbers in order to deliver Sophacy components to a server. So essentially they're exploiting Lambert implants on this server in China. Or finally, uh, and what is most likely going on, uh, the Sophacy guys are simply exploiting the same vulnerable web app server um, that's, that's running on this host. Um, but those are all interesting. So um, that's probably the, the, the Chinese server itself is probably the newest and most interesting because of that target crossover and because it's a completely new region that they're targeting. Um, one thing that I mentioned is that SPLM itself is not being delivered as you know, this fully featured backdoor. 
Um, it's based on the, what's known as the X agent source code. That's what the developer called it. Um, and that's what they used for years. Um, uh, and for the most part, the source was divided into a set of modules. You can see that list. Um, and the module list grew and shrank over time, depending on uh, the target they were hitting and what they needed at the time. Uh, there are multiple channels. So in 2016 and 2017, they were communicating purely over HTTPS, which was bundled into their HTTP channel. Um, but they also maintained code for FTP and SMTP capability that they were using, uh, you know, four or five years ago. Um, again, uh, almost all of this has disappeared, and really all we're seeing is the keylogger, the remote shell, and the process or um, the file system module, which is a file stealer, a file hunting tool, and file stealer. Um, but that seems to be disappearing, um, which brings us to Zebracy. So Zebracy seems to be uh, a subgroup of uh, APT28 or Sophacy. Um, it, more than a year ago, we saw them using uh, the same infrastructure as known Sophacy uh, malware. And uh, so we tied the two together. We believe that it's at least a subgroup. Um, where it gets tricky, though, um, is that they're using a completely different uh, malware set. So all of their modules are .NET, their PowerShell. Here you see um, uh, a function in sort of that yellow box. That's some of their .NET code from one of their file stealers. Um, when you plug in USB sticks or removable drives, uh, it provides a hook to identify um, this event occurred, and then it goes ahead and steals files off of that file system. Um, you can see their PowerShell here is they're replacing functionality that was previously delivered in other .NET code. And then over here is something a little more interesting. Here's the config file. They have kind of an any file that goes with their PowerShell code, which is odd conceptually. Um, but uh, in that PowerShell and um, any file or in that config file, there's a little um, date stamp, or at least in the date field. They maintain this field, and it's 09890J. And I thought about it, and I thought, this is strange. I know I've seen that before. And if you look a little higher, you'll see build IDs. They're 0C0703HJI. And um, for some of you who have been following Black Energy, um, in 2014, we posted something on their custom plugins and we would find build IDs in their custom plugins in these any files. So the format that they're using is uh, somewhat similar, and we don't, I don't see it elsewhere. Um, I find that kind of an interesting uh, similarity between the two groups. Um, let's see here. Uh, so one thing I'd, I'd just like to finish with about Zebracy is that there the code that, and components that they're delivering are very simple and modular. Uh, they're very different from the C++ that's exhaustive and difficult to maintain. This stuff gets replaced and pushed out uh, frequently. They, they do not sit on the same stuff for very long, which is, again, unusual for uh, Sophacy, who from 2004 to 2009 used the same stuff, from 2011 to 2017 was using the exact same stuff, or for the most part, the same stuff. Um, so I'd like to go back to the, the stuff that we're seeing when it comes to SPLM and kind of wrap up with comparisons across Sophacy and a, a little bit of a comparison to what we see with Turla to better understand sort of the culture of APT28 and what's going on. Um, so these in-process or these in-memory plugins that we're seeing on the server, um, they maintain the same custom crypto that was being used throughout 2017. Um, and basically, uh, it's a dynamic loop that changes per victim. They recompile the code for each victim that they're hitting. Um, so they're changing operators and constraints. There's 32 rounds. It's kind of a feedback, um, feedback-based Cypher, uh, um, 
And when I first looked at it, really I was kind of excited I might be finding something related to spec or based on NSA's new spec algorithms, but it's much simpler and it's much, uh, it's much more of a simple hack. So it certainly isn't that. But um, I wasn't able to match this custom algorithm to any standardized, standardized or known algorithm. So these guys are very, um, they are very practical in how they recode things and, and custom, custom fit their code. Um, so here are some of the uh, strings that they're hiding away behind the encryption. So when they deploy a, a plugin like the retranslator or the remote shell plugin, um, you'll see these error messages and the, uh, the English is really pretty good. The error messages are concise and uh, it looks pretty professional and measured. I mean, it's, it's what you need. Um, when you, uh, um, so when you look at their 2017 code, it's much, it's really pretty similar. So they have these, uh, this custom hack, they encode everything with this custom crypto, and that's essentially how they're trying to um, maintain some level of uh, obscurity within their code. Um, in the 2016 code, in the DNC hack, this is the crypto loop that they were using. There's simply two XOR, um, uh, two sequential XOR operations uh, from sequential bytes, I should say. Uh, it's a really pretty simple crypto, um, but again, it's a custom hack. These, are, these guys are very practical, very custom. Um, and then you compare it against the white bear stuff. So this is, this is something in 2016 that we found uh, related to Turla. And uh, Turla is kind of the exact opposite. It's a flip image of what's going on with Sophocy. You'll see elegant code. You'll see excellent, like, really well done injection techniques. Um, and so they, they have a handle on professionally implementing encryption schemes like RSA and DES, triple DES. It's very modular. It's really well done code, but they are crass and immature. You can, their, their code is littered with this kind of high school amateurish uh, stuff, and it's been that way for years. Um, so the, really all I'm trying to identify here or compare is that the, develop, the, the teams behind Turla are very different, and the culture of Turla is very different from what we see with Sophocy APT28, and uh, that continues. And then finally, uh, comparing it to Zebracy, so the old SPLM stuff um, and even the newer SPLM stuff that's being phased out is very different from Zebracy. So Zebracy, they, they do some practical custom hacks of crypto and ciphers, but um, it's, it's simple to maintain. They do it in .NET. There isn't some uh, unusually difficult or dynamic uh, algorithm they're using, they push this stuff out and then they'll just replace it all together with PowerShell or something completely different. But it's something that can be cranked out fairly quickly. Um, so uh, in 2018, we expect to see more of this. Um, there's, they're going to continue their activity. They're, very, they're a highly active group. Um, we're going to see more changed infrastructure, so I don't expect to see the same uh, infrastructure that Sophocy has been known to use in 2018. Uh, so, you know, there have been all sorts of public reports about identifying their infrastructure and the registrars and the registration. I think they, uh, they understand they, they are going to change that. Uh, the malware itself is not the same. Um, they're going to continue to move off of C++ and into uh, .NET and PowerShell even for existing tools. They'll port those over. And uh, we'll see continued open source. So a lot of the PowerShell that we've been seeing for them from them has been PowerShell Empire or based on Empire or other, other open, open source tools. Uh, we will see more of that. And then, of course, their focus has been shifting away from <clears throat> parts of Central Asia and towards the Far East, which I expect more of. So uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.